testing continuing to go well toward the launch of it. Okay, Mark Hess reading that letter from President Reagan. I'm sure the crew uh, was interested, but more interested, Gene, in the news that they are indeed going to launch. I, I, I know they appreciated that message from the President. Uh, at this time, uh, as uh, Sally indicated earlier, you know, the crew and the spacecraft all become one. From that nine-minute time on down, you know you're, you're going, unless, of course, you have some final little glitch at the end. Of course, now, if they must uh, stop now and recycle, they could not go in 24 hours. It will take much more time. There goes the, the arm being pulled back. We're looking at the white room uh, where they enter into the hatch of the spacecraft being pulled back, and uh, they are now really becoming uh, an independent uh, vehicle ready to go into space. And, you know, night launches are not just something that is done to be spectacular. A lot of people ask, why did we go to the moon on Apollo 17 at night? There was a purpose for it. We could only land uh, at a particular place in the month of December on the moon uh, if we went at night. In a shuttle, it's, it's certainly that way, uh, in this particular case, to launch an Indian satellite at a particular time and space. And also, and also, according to General Abramson today, to, to get this behind them so that they can plan future night launches if the weather forces them to do that. But, but it, it also means now the shuttle truly now uh, does not have to depend upon landing in daytime in sites around the world in the future. It can land at nighttime anywhere from one coast to the other coast of this country, and it truly makes the shuttle a very, very versatile vehicle. I hope all the people who live in those southern states, uh, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, all of Florida and the Bahamas, can stand outside now. <laughs> I hate to send you away from your television sets, but you might be able to see it. Actually, it'll be about eight minutes before you could see it, but uh, there really might be a view if you can have a, an unobstructed uh, uh, sight uh, to, towards the Kennedy Space Center. You know, night launches, I, I've heard Dick, uh, uh, and I've talked to Dick and, and Van, about their uh, their training and they feel that they're very well capable and qualified uh, uh, to make this launch in the landing but at night time it does take a dimension away from you uh, what about the landing gene what's the what's the difference with the landing well you know you just see a lot less uh, they depend a lot more on instrumentation a lot of their landmarks uh, are gone it doesn't mean that uh, it can't be done it's done every day here's a pilot's eye view from a practice landing of the shuttle now this is very much like coming aboard a carrier as I see this film. You see a lot of lights, you don't really have a great deal of depth perception because you can't see what's beyond the lights. When I say nighttime landings uh, or takeoffs take a one dimension of your senses away from you, I think we can appreciate it by looking at this picture. They of course maintain that they are not the least bit frightened, they are not the least bit apprehensive. They've done this practice so many times. Astronauts are never frightened, Lynn, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> a little apprehensive at times, but never frightened. We are now within five minutes. Uh, you can hear the uh, uh, the excitement in now, the voice of some of the crew members, and I can certainly understand seven that. Minutes, or if we should run into a problem between now and T minus 31 seconds when primary control of the countdown is turned over to Challenger's onboard computers. And we should point out that T minus 31 seconds was a very key moment for Richard Truly the first time he went up. The clock stopped there, and they had to uh, go away and come back again before they could go up. Then as we wait for the uh, spectacularness of uh, the sky lighting up, I can only repeat what someone repeated to me one time. They said uh, the night launch of Apollo 17 was like the universe lit up from without. Now, that's hard to understand, perhaps, and that's what I'm waiting for as I watch the shuttle eight, the Challenger to go. T minus four minutes and counting. Crew has been asked to close the visors on their launch and entry helmets. Final purge sequence of the main engine is now underway. T minus three minutes, 50 seconds and counting. Orbiter aerial surface test is underway. Orbiter flight control surface is now being moved to a pre-programmed pattern to verify they are ready for launch. Okay, Richard Truly is the commander of this mission. He is a Navy man. And let's take a look and a listen at what he said about the job he is now doing. Well, I think the real fun thing is uh, being the commander of a crew that, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I heard that. ...or fuel cells fed by ground reactants through the T-Zero umbilicals. T-minus three minutes, ten seconds. Engine gimbal checks are complete. Shuttle main engines have been placed in the start position. Richard Truly, the commander of the shuttle, which is sitting on the pad right now, ready to go in three minutes. 
When yeah, Richard Shirley first took off, it was his 44th birthday. Now he's a year and a half older. And pressurization has started. The view we see even before launch with the spotlights on the, on the bright white painted vehicle is truly spectacular. Minutes, Ted, uh, if, if I had a wish for you, it for you to be down here with us. Vent hood. Ground launch sequencer will make a final check to make sure the vent arm is fully retracted at T minus 37 seconds. Of course, there are not only humans on board, there are a number of experiments and six rats traveling on this launch of the shuttle. The crew now is truly very active. Uh, many things are happening automatically through ground computers. But the three men up in the, uh, in the upper deck counting. Uh, who are actually going to monitor and uh, and take over all the control systems uh, if they must, if they need to, T either to get into orbit or to bring it back here in case of an emergency, are uh, truly very busy. As Sally said in her interview, you know, prior to T-9, she sharpened pencils and do that and around. But right now, I guarantee you, they're underway. going down that checklist. and uh, now completely isolated from ground-loading equipment. T minus one minute, 43 seconds, and counting. That is a spectacular view. Of course, now. the one man doing Jack nothing right now is Dr. William Thornton. He's eight, on the mid-deck area. He's got his sensors crew. attached. He is going to lie back and enjoy the view. Just like these folks. Main <laughs> he indicated to that to make this a truly uh, uh, accomplishing flight for him, he wanted to get sick and find out why. <laughs> find out why. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you, though, these guys are in for a thrill because minute, their entrance into space counting. will be noted by a sunrise over Africa and one minute, 15 golly how I can tank now empathize with pressure. them. We are told it's going to be almost like daylight here, almost like sunlight. There's about a quarter, of a quarter moon, but it's uh, a bit hidden. T minus one minute and counting. Sound suppression water system now armed. Pre lift off water will be released at T minus 16 seconds. T minus 50 seconds and counting. Hydrogen burn igniters have been armed. T minus 45 seconds and counting. Solid rocket booster development flight instrumentation recorder is going to the record mode. Main propulsion system, liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen, outboard fill valves have been closed. T minus 35 seconds and counting. T minus 31. We have a go for auto sequence start. Challenger's four redundant computer is now assuming primary control of critical vehicle functions from now through liftoff. T minus 20 seconds and counting. SRB engine nozzle gimbal profile now underway. T minus 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. We have engine start. Two, one. We have ignition and we have liftoff. Liftoff, 32 minutes after the hour and the shuttle has cleared the tower. around a little bit. The spectacularness of this, this One minute, this 30 seconds. Is Velocity, 3,700 feet per second. Altitude, uh, 12 and a half miles. Downrange, 9 miles. And it is still visible to the All naked eye here in the ground. The glow of the solid rockets is very, very clear from here. It's now beyond those upper cloud layers. Uh, we ought to be getting the uh, solid rocket booster cutoff in about uh, 15 seconds here. And we may very well see that later through the cloud deck.
standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Roger. Confirm uh, SRB separation. Guidance has confirmed, has, con has converged. And your first stage performance was nominal. Houston, you have two-engine towel capability. Challenger now capable of a transatlantic abort to Dakar, Senegal on Africa's west coast if one main engine fails. This is Bill Schechner in New York. What we're looking at is the launch pad at Cape Canaveral. We, like everyone else, except for our folks in Florida, have been looking at this on television. It was quite special. They told us it would be. Let's look at it again.